Hi, I'm Abby Clausen, Digital Editor at Advertising Age, and welcome to our Mobile Roundtable 2008. Joining us are Maria Mendel, Senior Partner Executive Director of Digital Innovation at Ogilvy, Richard Ting, VP and Executive Creative Director of RGA's Mobile and Emerging Platforms Group, Cynthia McIntyre, Senior Director of Advertising at CareerBuilder.com, and Eric Bader, Managing Partner of Brand in Hand. We're going to talk about the opportunities, the challenges, and the lessons we're all learning in the mobile marketing space. So let's get right to the point, guys. Most people say they don't want ads on phones. Is that what mobile marketing is, ads on phones? What are we talking about here? People don't want to see ads if you ask them, and yet every, we all love brands. And so if a brand is able to give you an experience that allows you to uh, save time or kill time or enjoy the experience, then the connection to the brand is still there. And that's true through any medium, uh, including mobile. Um, but you know, pushing ads at consumers where it's uh, a message that isn't necessarily relevant, isn't necessarily well-timed, and doesn't take advantage of the mobility for which we buy our phones and, and the services that come with it in the first place, we got to be able to pay that off. So the smart marketers and the smart brands and the smart people um, offering advertising to consumers and expecting them to interact are the ones who are tailoring the experience to the mobility of the phone, the utility of the phone, and not making it an arduous experience to have a, have a good time with a brand, but actually offer something that you know consumers are going to get a benefit out of. Cynthia, can you tell us just a little bit about kind of the evolution of, of mobile marketing at CareerBuilder.com? You know, how long have you guys been playing in this space, and, and what have you done, you know, leading up to, I think, probably the most recent thing that we've all heard about is your iPhone app. Right, which we're very proud of. Um, really, you know, it's sort of our Petri dish at, at CareerBuilder. Uh, we started testing back in 2004, and it's about understanding uh, the needs of our clients, which are businesses that post jobs on careerbuilder.com, and understanding the consumers and them wanting to receive job alerts or job recommendations, how often, when. And what's interesting is that there is interest at this point. We, uh, just from our iPhone application, we've seen half a million um, job searches, job views, which is great. So, Do you, you know, know how many people are downloading the app? Uh, so far, we've seen a, a few thousand downloads. Okay. So we're excited about so people that. people are using it a yes. lot. I mean, if yes. you have 500,000 searches yes. with and a couple thousand And we're downloads. excited about that. And it's, I mean, for us right now at this stage, we're, we're still learning. Yeah, interesting. Are you guys, what are you guys talking about with your clients? Are you talking about apps? I mean, this is in your job title, sure. <laughs> Richard. So pretty much, um, you know, there, there obviously is the iPhone application environment, but there's also the Nokia application environment. Uh, for Nokia, they have a platform called Widsets. Um, also within the Nokia world, uh, you can create flashlight applications as well. I think BlackBerry has an application environment. T-Mobile just announced that they're opening up their application environment as well. So I think right now the conversation that's happening a lot with clients are um, focused around creating applications because applications can provide consumers with richer experiences as opposed to mobile websites. Clients are realizing that um, they can create better experiences and more richer experiences through application development. And I think a lot of the handset manufacturers and the carriers are starting to open up their environments to allow agencies to create content in those, in, in those environments. Hmm. I could yeah. agree with that more. I think it comes down to what experience you want to enable. And I think it's not about just doing an app for the sake of doing an app. Because if you're delivering some information, for example, that's time-sensitive, location-sensitive information that can be delivered via text. Text messaging may be the way that you want to go. Um, as the mobile web evolves and develops, there are certain things that might be easier to execute using the mobile web. But there definitely is a time and a place to leverage apps, and I think Richard made some great examples of some applications that allow you to create this enhanced user experience that's right for a mobile person while that, they're That on app the go. store is going to be Darwinian. Right. You're going to see that the apps that consumers want to gravitate to are the ones that are going to go right to the top in terms right. of popularity and recommendations and being shared, and the ones that are useless that are just brands trying to, you know, shill to consumers with no real purpose there, they're going to fall out of the bottom. They're not going to see enough downloads to, to make a difference. Right. And, you know, it's as everybody's said very articulately, <laughs> that it really is, you know, yes, it's the most overused word of the overused word of the century, but engagement 
really means something, though. You know, engagement means something when you're spending money on right. paid media and when you're spending money to interact with consumers. And so, um, you know, the number of post-click page views and the number of people who are with you deeper into an experience really matters, and that's the stuff that you spend money right. on. And that's why you spend more money on highly engaged. Um, uh, media like um, you know really smart applications or deeper mobile websites than you do on a sponsorship. How long does it take to set up a mobile ad campaign? I mean, is this a complicated thing, or where is that at right now? I, I think nowadays more and more clients are asking us to put together um, mobile campaigns that take into account advertising. They're looking also for us to put together sustainable programs, whereas in the past it would just hey, we have some leftover budget, can you guys do a mobile execution because we want to test and learn what the medium is all about. But I think nowadays pretty much every client is coming to us and they're asking us for long-term strategic visions for how they could uh, tap into the mobile medium. And part of that is obviously looking at how mobile advertising um, plays into it. I think more and more um, of the projects that we're going to put out there for, um, in the future are going to have some type of mobile advertising component to it. Hmm. Do you agree with that? Are you seeing that? I, I'm absolutely point. seeing it. What I'm seeing is a lot of confusion in the marketplace in terms of how to leverage mobile because mobile is both a push and a pull media channel and it's interesting because there's a lot of confusion of when you use each and I think that from a mobile media perspective where you're pushing and you're going out to where the people are and how they're using mobile and either sponsoring SMS messages, sponsoring apps, or leveraging and purchasing mobile media. It's a way to get out there and reach people and drive them into an experience. And then there's also using mobile as more of a direct response mechanism and driving somebody to respond or engage with their brand. And I still think that there's a lot of uh, misunderstandings of when to use each and um, some very tactical types of programs where people jump to gravitate, okay, this was on the cover of the Wall Street Journal, so I'm going to go and do this mobile tactic, or why don't we have this type of app, to say, okay, let's take a step back and say, okay, what are our marketing objectives, what type of experience do we want to enable, or what business problems do we want to help solve, and how to use mobile in the best way to go about doing that. Yeah. One of the ways um, that we're also um, getting mobile to be a little bit more um, considered uh, for a lot of brands is we've gone out and really um, found a way to move underperforming dollars out of channels uh, like email and direct mail, uh, but done it at a scale where um, clients are able to have a reasonable shift of funds. You don't take $20 million and just uh, all of a sudden put it into mobile and expect it to perform the way that um, direct mail can or, or uh, email can, but in a lot of cases for a lot of clients, um, those channels are starting to diminish. So, like, what's what's a typical budget that you could move into mobile? And yeah, I mean, uh, to give you an example, I mean, we, we've been successful uh, literally at the fifty thousand dollar level, at the hundred thousand dollar level, two hundred and fifty thousand dollar level. Um, but look, you know, mobile today doesn't have the kinds of sizes of audiences and the segments that can be effective at 13, 15, 20 million dollars, mm -hmm. right? It just doesn't work to be able to target those audiences, depending on what you're using it for. If it's a heavy acquisition campaign, um, you know, you're going to have trouble finding enough audience, but you'll find a great audience and you will find very good response rates, and we have for, you know, 100,000 to 250,000 dollars in that range. Mm -hmm. Lots of aspects of mobile we didn't get to today, but please stay tuned throughout the year because we'll be continuing to write about it in AdAge. This is Abby Clausen, the digital editor at AdAge. Thanks for being with us. Mm -hmm.